Good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, April 11th. I'm Denise Douglas. So glad you could join us tonight. The session in Annapolis is over, but it was still a very busy day. Governor Larry Hogan, along with the Senate president and Speaker of the House, signed over 100 bills into law. Hogan says the last 90 days were productive, praising the fact that the legislation that will create more jobs was among the measures passed. bills today. I think we have a whole big pile of other ones we are going to sign for three more uh, bill signings. Uh, but uh, most of our highest priorities all got done and it's thanks to these two gentlemen sitting on either side of me. Um, today we're going to be signing uh, the transportation legislation that will allow us to move forward on all the priority projects all across the state which will all begin immediately. Um, we got a jobs package uh, that is critically important to bring thousands of new jobs to the areas that really need them. Uh, you know, we've already added 105,000 jobs and dropped unemployment to 4.2%, to, uh, but this is going to help the areas where we really need them, the jobs in Baltimore City and Western Maryland, Eastern Shore, and places like that. And uh, very pleased that uh, because of the hard work of these two gentlemen that uh, the first real meaningful ethics reform in, uh, in 15 years has passed. As the governor said there, 115 bills were signed during today's ceremony. Most go into effect on October 1st. Prince George's County Executive Rashawn Baker says the county fared well during this legislative session. One item passed by the General Assembly is the prescription drug price gouging bill, which gives Maryland's Attorney General the power to investigate companies suspected of taking advantage of people. Baker also says the session was beneficial for the new regional hospital. I want to thank, you know, the president of the Senate and the speaker of the House and the Prince George's delegation for putting that money back in there, which will help, you know, the southern part of, of the state. Um, it's unfortunate we had to fight hard to get that done. Transportation, which we didn't talk about, is a big one for us. We did not see any additional funding for transportation dollars coming to the county, not just the Prince George's County. I was on TV with the county executive from Hartford County, and he was saying the same thing, both transportation, lack of funding for that, and for, for to deal with a drug addiction. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be looking at that. Maryland is the first state in the nation to pass a prescription price gouging bill. Meantime, lawmakers in Annapolis unanimously pass a bill aimed at protecting victims of domestic violence. Amber's law would authorize the courts to require an alleged abuser, upon the request of the victim, to wear an electronic monitoring device as a condition of release while they await trial. The law was named after Amber Chenault who was murdered in 2012 by her ex-boyfriend despite the fact that there was a protective order. County Council Member Mel Franklin calls it an amazing triumph. Our protection. Uh, let's, let's create an opportunity where the court finds a reasonable basis that they will then impose uh, that sort of restriction on the, the perpetrator. Governor Hogan is expected to sign the measure into law. He is charged with the death of his own daughter, and today police announced his arrest over the weekend. Three-week-old Kendra Hernandez was in her father, Nestor Hernandez's care, when police were called to their home on Patterson Street because she was unresponsive. An, an autopsy revealed the cause of her death was blunt force trauma. Here's what police say they found when they arrived at the residence. The hospital, and as it was taken to the hospital, uh, it was pronounced dead the next day. Um, our homicide investigators at that juncture conducted an investigation and determined that the uh, father, uh, Mr. Nestor Hernandez, was uh, the sole uh, custody of the baby at that time and he was charged accordingly. Okay, Robinson tells us that police continue to look into the case as well as the father's background.